discussing about uh, extra corticospinal or extra pyramidal tracts. Among this group of motor pathways, last time we discussed rubrospinal tract, tectospinal tract, and reticulospinal tract. So we discussed in the last lecture rubrospinal, tectospinal, and then reticulospinal tracts. Today, first about the vestibulospinal tract, vestibulospinal tract, vestibular nuclei, vestibular nuclei are present in the lower palms and medulla of the data on the floor of the fourth ventricle. So vestibular nuclei are located in the lower palms and upper medulla of the data in the floor of the Fourth ventricle. You see, this is the lateral and medial vestibular nuclei. Lateral and medial vestibular nuclei. So the main tract, the main vestibular spinal tract, it originates from the lateral vestibular nuclei. So the main vestibular spinal tract originates from the lateral vestibular nucleus. Now after origin, the nerve fibers remain uncrossed, remain uncrossed, and the tract descends to enter the anterior white column, anterior white column of the spinal cord. The tract fibers culminate at various levels in the spinal cord onto the alpha and gamma motor neurons. Right? So the tract fibers culminate at various levels in the spinal cord onto the alpha and gamma motor neurons. The tract fibers first synapse with interneurons, first synapse with the interneurons, which in turn synapse with the motor neurons. So the termination of the tract fibers is through interneurons. This is the lateral vestibulospinal tract. The main tract is lateral vestibular spinal tract, which originates from the lateral vestibular nucleus. Through this tract, cerebellum and inner ear control the activity of the alpha and motor, alpha and gamma motor neurons. So this tract, cerebellum and inner ear, controls the activity of the alpha and gamma motor neurons. Keep in mind that vestibular nuclei receive nerve fibers from the cerebellum and inner ear. Vestibular nuclei receive nerve fibers from the cerebellum and in the right? Vestibular spinal tract, the lateral is main, is facilitatory to the extensors and inhibitory to the transfers. So it is facilitatory to the extensors, the anti-gravity muscles, and inhibitory, inhibitory to the flexors. So this is the main vestibular spinal tract, that is the lateral vestibular spinal tract. Its small portion is medial vestibular spinal tract. So its small portion is medial vestibular spinal tract, 
that originates from the medial vestibular nucleus originates from the medial vestibular nucleus and it terminates onto the alpha and gamma motor neurons in the cervical segments of the spinal cord so medial vestibular spinal tract it terminates onto the alpha and gamma motor neurons in the cervical segments cervical segments of the spinal cord to so keep in mind medial vestibular nucleus it receives impulses from the semicircular canals so the medial vestibular nucleus it receives impulses from the semicircular canals and then nerve fibers to this tract these go to the cervical segments of the spinal cord so this was about the vestibular spinal tract the next uh, extra cortical spinal tract or extra pyramidal tract is oligo spinal tract oligo spinal tract oligo spinal tract the seeds uh, so it is it it, it originates this tract it originates from the inferior olivary nucleus so oligo spinal tract originates from the inferior oligo olivary in the middle of the gate you see this is the inferior olivary nucleus and the tract originates from this nucleus and then the nerve fibers cross over the nerve fibers cross over to the opposite side and then the tract descends into the white column of the spinal cord descends into the and the right column of the spinal cord and terminate onto the alpha and gamma motor neurons in the spinal cord and this termination of the tract is keep in mind two interneurons it is two interneuron first the tract fibers synapse with interneurons which in turn synapse with the alpha and gamma motor neurons inferior olivary nucleus the seeds nerve fibers nerve fibers from the cerebral cortex cerebral cortex corpus striatum corpus striatum a red nucleus and spinal cord so inferior olivary nucleus it receives nerve fibers from the cerebral cortex corpus striatum red nucleus and the spinal cord so this olivo spinal tract is involved in the control of the motor activity involved in the control of the motor activity So this was about the oligo spinal tract. The last of the descending motor tracts or descending motor pathways is descending autonomic pathways. Descending autonomic pathways. So these descending autonomic pathways originate from the high center. originate from the high centers including cerebral cortex cerebral cortex hypothalamus hypothalamus amygdala and reticular formation so these pathways originate from high centers including cerebral cortex hypothalamus amygdala and reticular formation 
So after the origin, the nerve fibers cross over to the opposite side. The nerve fibers cross over to the opposite side. And then these pathways, autonomic pathways, accompany reticospinal tract. So these autonomic pathways, these accompany reticospinal tract to enter the spinal cord, to enter the spinal cord. And these descending autonomic pathways terminate, terminate onto the preganglionic autonomic neurons. These terminate onto the preganglionic autonomic neurons in the segments T1 to L2. The segment T1 to L2 and the sacral segments of the spinal cord. So these descending autonomic pathways terminate onto the autonomic neurons in the segments T1 to L2, first thoracic to number second, and also to the central segments of the spinal cord. So keep in mind in the segment T1 to L2, there are sympathetic preganglionic neurons. In the segments T1 to L2, they are sympathetic preganglionic neurons. And the second segments, in the second segments, they are parasympathetic preganglionic neurons. So they are parasympathetic preganglionic neurons. So this was about the descending autonomic pathways and about the descending tracks or descending motor pathways. We can divide the descending tracks into lateral motor system and medial motor system. We divide the descending pathways or descending motor, motor pathways into the lateral motor system and the medial motor system. Lateral motor system. Lateral motor system, it consists of corticospinal and rubrospinal tracts. It consists of corticospinal and rubrospinal tracts. And these tracts innervate distal muscles of the leg. These two tracts corticospinal and rubrospinal, these, these innervate distal muscles of the limbs. So the lateral motor system innervates the distal muscles of the limbs, hence involved in the control of, in the control of fine voluntary, fine skirt voluntary fine scaled movements of the limbs. So lateral motor system is involved in the control of voluntary fine scaled movements of the distal parts of the distal parts of the limbs. So this was about the lateral motor system. Now we come to the medial motor system. Medial motor system. It includes the reticulospinal tract and vestibulospinal tract. So it includes reticulospinal tract and vestibulospinal tract. Now these two tracts innervate proximal muscles of the body. These innervate proximal muscles of the body. So these tracks or this medial motor system is involved in the control of posture and equilibrium. 
So medial motor system is involved in the control of OSIP and equilibrium. Right? So keep in mind the medial motor system consisting of the spinal tract, vestibular spinal tract is involved in the control of the posture and equilibrium. So just look about the lateral motor system and the medial motor system. We divide the motor system also into two types of neurons. Two types of neurons. Lower motor neurons and upper motor neurons. So lower motor neurons and upper motor neurons. What are the lower motor neurons? These innervate skeletal muscle. So lower motor neurons innervate skeletal muscle. These neurons, these neurons form final common pathway to the skeletal muscle. So these form final common pathway, final common pathway to the skeletal muscle. So if any motor impulse has to go to the skeletal muscle, it will pass through the lower motor neurons. If any motor impulse has to go to the skeletal muscle, it has to go through the lower motor neurons. Now where are these neurons located? So these neurons which are called lower motor neurons, these are the alpha motor neurons, alpha motor neurons in the ventral horn of the spinal cord. So alpha motor neurons in the ventral horn of the spinal cord and motor neurons in the motor nuclei of cranial nerves and motor neurons in the motor nuclei of cranial nerves so these are the lower motor neurons. Alpha motor neurons in the ventral or spinal cord and then the motor neurons in the motor nuclei of the cranial nerves in the brain stem. In the brain stem, there are motor uh, neurons in the motor nuclei of the cranial nerves. So what are the upper motor neurons? Upper motor these are located above the level of alpha motor neurons, or you say above the level of the lower motor neurons. So these are located above the level of the lower motor neurons. Located above the level of the lower motor neurons. In the medulla oblongata, pons, midbrain, and cerebral cortex. So these are located in the middle of the data, pons, midbrain, and cerebral cortex. Upper motor neurons control the motor activity through separate pathways. Upper motor neurons control the motor activity through separate pathways. Through separate pathways. And these include the corticospinal system and extra corticospinal system. So these include corticospinal system and extra corticospinal system. So these two systems constitute, constitute the upper motor neurons. Upper motor neurons. Next I discuss about the lower motor neuron region. Lower motor neuron region. What are the features of the lower motor neuron region? 
what are the causes of lower motor neuron need? Causes of lower motor neuron need. These include infection such as poliomyelitis, infection such as poliomyelitis, vascular disorders, vascular disorders, say thrombosis, trauma, injury, trauma or injury, a tumor, tumor, and then degeneration, degeneration of the lower motor neuron. So causes include infections such as poliomyelitis, trauma, injury, vascular disorders such as thrombosis, and then tumor, other cause may be uh, degeneration, degeneration. So what are the features of the lower motor neuron need? Features. There is flaccid paralysis in the affected part. Flaccid paralysis. Flaccid paralysis in the affected part. Classic paralysis in the affected part, loss of movements, paralysis, along with loss of muscle tone. So loss of movement, that is paralysis, along with the loss of the muscle tone. This is classic paralysis. Now in the lower motor neuron region only some muscles are affected. Only some muscles are affected. And in some muscles there is flaccid paralysis. You keep in mind a case of poliomyelitis. So in that one arm may be affected. One leg may be affected. So some muscles are affected in this lower motor neuron region loss of superficial and abdominal reflexes in the affected part. So loss of superficial and deep reflexes in the affected part. So loss of superficial and deep reflexes in the affected part. Loss of muscle tone in the affected part is uh, say atonia or hypotonia, atonia or hypotonia. Then in the affected muscles there is atrophy, atrophy, decreased muscle mass. So there is atrophy in the affected muscle. And what is the cause of atrophy? due to loss of trophic action of motor nerves. Due to loss of trophic action of motor nerves. Due to loss of trophic action of motor nerves. Keep in mind that intact motor nerve supply to the muscles maintains its health its growth, its function. So the intact motor nerve supply to the muscle maintain its health, growth and function. So when there is a low motor neuron region, there is loss of the trophic action, loss of the trophic action of the motor nerves. And this results into muscle atrophy. Muscle atrophy due to loss of trophic action of the motor nerve supplying the muscle. But then there are fasciculations and fibrillation. Fasciculations and fibrillation. What are the fasciculations? 
visible contraction of groups of muscles, of muscle fibers. So visible contraction of groups of muscle fibers, fasciculation. Now when there is a degeneration of the lower motor neurons, there will be fasciculation. And fasciculation is visible contraction of groups of muscle fibers. It is seen that there is slow degeneration of the lower motor neuron. There are fibrillations. Fibrillations are non visible contraction of contraction of individual muscle fibers. Non visible contraction of the individual muscle fibers are the fasciculations. Then there is shortening of shortening of the paralyzed muscle. Shortening of the paralyzed muscle. And then Babinski sign is not present. Babinski sign is not present. Babinski's sign is not present. I will discuss Babinski's sign when I will discuss with the upper motor neuron B. Right? So Babinski's sign is not present. I will discuss later about the Babinski's sign. Then there is reaction of degeneration. Reaction of degeneration. Reaction of degeneration. And that is when there is low motor neuron region or the nerve the muscle is cut, the muscle stops responding to phalletic stimulation after seven days and to galvanic stimulation after 10 days. So after the low motor neuron region, say the motor nerve supplying the muscle is cut, the muscle stops response to ferritic stimulation after 7 days and stops respond to responding to galvanic stimulation after 10 days. So no response to ferritic stimulation after 7 days and no response to galvanic stimulation after 10 days. What is ferritic stimulation? Is interrupted current stimulation. So ferritic means interrupted current stimulation. And what is galvanic stimulation? That is the direct current stimulus. So galvanic is direct current stimulation is galvanic galvanic stimulation. So this is the reaction of regeneration which may be uh, tested in uh, lower motor neuron leak. And this was about the features of the lower motor neurons. So we stop here.